Hello. Welcome to the Harrisonburg High School Fine Arts Academy Showcase, Closed Eyes. Pandemic education has created true barriers for students, teachers, families, and communities. One area that continues to flourish is creativity. On behalf of the Fine Arts Academy staff and faculty, we are so proud of our students' determination and diligence to find a way to create art and share it with you here. Without further ado, we hope that you enjoy our Fall 2020 Showcase, Closed Eyes. When I thought of closed eyes, I remembered this old grounding exercise I had heard about growing up to help you with calming yourself down. Basically, when you were feeling anxious, you would close your eyes and think about five things you feel, four things you hear, three things you smell, but I modified it slightly so I could put movement to them easier. I decided to do this exercise in the three most important and calming places to me, and I started coming up with the movement for each one I wrote down. I then put all of them in different sequences and pieced them together with the music. I chose an instrumental song because I feel like my piece is more about the process than the final product. I really felt like this process showed me new ways to generate and choreograph movement. Thank you. Hi, my name is Claudia Cabrera and I'm part of the visual arts strand. The name of my piece is Vivid Fantasies. It was a difficult process to come up with an idea that would fit the subject, but I ended up with an oil acrylic portrait. I thought portrait I slowly transitioned to doodles. It transitions from style, color palette, vibrancy, even feelings. The portrait is more ethereal, with bluish purplish color, almost unreal. It gave my best attempt to make it look as realistic as possible. It represents what is outside our minds, the real world you can see when your eyes are open, the real world that can feel almost fake sometimes. Then in the bottom there is a lot of random drawings, some monsters, some blobs, flowers, some plants, and some are even strife of colors. That's fantasy, or imagination, the world we can see when your eyes are closed. That plane of existence that can feel real sometimes. The macron is just a mixy gradient. The closer it gets to my mind, the brighter it gets, like my own imagination keeping me away from the darkness that can swallow me sometimes. As I said, the process of coming up with it was complicated. Same as the one I'm working on it. I kept failing, I wasn't able to paint with oils properly. I even broke canvas for pure frustration. But I just kept trying, and I'm happy with it, and the meaning behind it. I hope you too as, as well. Hi, my name is Nina Alabanza, and I am in the creative writing strand of the Fine Arts Academy. When I first heard the theme, Closed Eyes, I took it to mean the removal of a sense, as is what happens when you close your eyes. So, I wanted to be able to tell a story without necessarily using words, or any of the traditional senses that creative writing is usually experienced with. 
So for my showcase, which is a piece I entitled Teeth, I wrote a short horror story, and to go along with that, I have created an auditory narrative, which is a steady buildup of sounds, noises, and tones that should give the same feelings of suspense and horror as my actual writing does. I would strongly recommend using headphones for the best experience, but I'm also putting a trigger warning for auditory sensory overload. So without further ado, please enjoy Teeth.
Hi! So for my quiz I showcase, I decided to create a medley of songs in which the writer describes the person they love without referencing any of their physical features as if they fell in love with their eyes closed. I used pieces from the song She by Doty, Backyard Boy by Claire Rosencrantz, and Home by Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros. I was inspired by society's unrealistic beauty standards and how different the world would be if we essentially lived with our eyes closed. Making this was a lot harder than I expected, but luckily I had help from Ellie Peaks and Ella, so yeah, you'll hear me and Peaks performing. I hope you enjoy. She smells like lovely grass and sleep. She tastes like apple juice and peach. Oh, you would find her in a Polaroid picture. She means everything to me. Oh, let me go. Homies wherever I can make you. Oh, let me go. Homies wherever I can make you. I'll follow you into the dark. strand of the Fine Arts Academy. For my closed eyes showcase, I thought about when you close your eyes, you see little blurred dots. I transferred this to art by making a collage. The collage is of the ocean, and this is because when I close my eyes and think about the ocean, it's calming. I got help and an idea to use words for the waves to break up the piece more. I used Black Lives Matter and political articles to represent all of the chaos that is going around that surrounds the calm. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the Closed Eyes Showcase. When I heard the theme Closed Eyes, I immediately thought of how if an animal closes their eyes around someone, it means they trust them. I believe this applies to people as well, so I wanted to create a showcase based around the idea of someone struggling with whether they can trust someone enough to close their eyes around them or let their guard down. So for this piece, I created a dance video that both ends and begins with a trust fall. In between these trust falls, I choreographed a piece that is supposed to represent what is going on inside the person's head when they're trying to decide whether they can trust a person or not.
Hello. My showcase is about suicide and how that a choice can affect family and friends. I had a recent experience where my friend tried to commit suicide. Luckily, she's all right now, but I wanted to take that experience and show the choices have an effect on others. It's realistic to close eyes by when you're feeling overwhelmed or any negative emotion, your first instinct is to close your eyes and try to block out the world. There is a trigger warning on this video, so please keep that in mind while you're watching. I hope you enjoy. Dear Olivia, well, here it is. My, my last thoughts before I go, or was, I guess you'll be reading this after I'm gone. I don't really know what to say other than I'll miss you and I love you so, so, so much. I guess I can tell you why I did it. I tried to put on a smile and laugh with you, and I tried, but I just couldn't anymore. <laughs> I couldn't pretend that the pain wasn't there, and I was okay. I never talked about anything. No one knows what goes on inside my mind. <laughs> I couldn't keep crying myself to sleep and waking up every morning, acting like everything is alright. I didn't want to bother others with what was going on inside my head. I felt like a waste of space. <laughs> Goodbye, Olivia. Loving and fighting, accusing and denying I can't imagine a world with you gone The joy and the chaos, the demons were made up I'd be so lost if you left me alone You locked yourself in the bathroom Lying on the floor when I break through I pull you in to feel your heartbeat Can you hear me screaming, please don't talk about me without breaking down into tears. One day I'll be in the back of your mind and you'll think of me every once in a while, but I won't haunt your dreams anymore. Please just try to hold on. Hold on, I still want you. I love you, Liv. Come back, I still Bye. need you.
Hello, my name is Leslie Rivera and I'm in the music strand. For my showcase, since the theme was closed eyes, um, for me, closed eyes represents memories as if I close my eyes and I um, remember good times I had with people. So um, my showcase is based off of this memory that I have with my mom singing one of her favorite songs, which is about memories too. So I've decided to um, team up with her and um, sing this song together. And I'm gonna show you a video with pictures that is um, all the memories that me and my mom have together. Enjoy. When I heard of closed eyes, I thought about how I listen to music and how I use the feeling of a song to create an image in my head. I then had the idea to use that image to create an album cover, but instead of it be being for a full album, it's for separate songs. Each song has its own journey of emotion and story to tell. While organizing the orders, I wanted it to be as if I put on my main playlist, sat back, closed my eyes, and took some time out of my day to imagine. I hope you can feel as if this is your own playlist and be able to relate the images I saw to the feelings of the songs. Thank you. Minute past security, the secretary, the cubicles But it's weird, it's like this room I've walked into is unusual Thought it'd be shiny and beautiful Thought it'd be alive and like musical But it feels like someone died It's got the vibe of a funeral There's numbers on a chalkboard CDs boxed in cardboard Artists that blocks have got dropped And never got to be sophomores Graphic designers are sitting around Waiting for albums that never come out Complaining that they have nobody in-house Wondering what they make art for I start thinking, am I in the right place? Just rock board, see plaques on the wall Oh yeah, and a second those will be all yours.
sophomore in the dance room of the Fine Arts Academy. For my idea for this showcase, let's to play with the idea of how in the blink of an eye your life can pass before you. To generate my movement, I used the brain dance, which is the first eight cycles of movement that infants go through as they are first developing. Those are breath, tactile, core distal, head tail, upper lower, body halves, cross lateral, and vestibular. I also composed a guitar part, which you will, you will hear in the background of the video. I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much. Eyes showcase I wrote a story poem. My inspiration for my piece was Dr. Seuss because um, our theme reminded me of an illustration he did with um, a bunch of yellow eyes and a black background. I wrote my story in the style of Dr. Seuss and my favorite book by him, The Lorax. I also made my video in a kind of a groovy 70s styles font because The Lorax was published in the 70s. Um, I tell the story in the second perspective so that way the reader feels as though they are the main character and it's self applicable. I struggled a little bit with the video making process but overall I'm very proud of my piece and I hope you all enjoy. In the tall grass next to Gruffle Street, there the old man offers a sweet treat. The old man's name is never forgotten, the toothy teeth in his smile are rotten. Theodore Fu whispers how do you do, he shushes. Oh, all the things I can do for you, all the things I can do, all the things you can be. He coos like the hums of frickle flock fleas. He shows you his tiny treasures, glory and all, like when your brother would taunt you with a ball. 
He puffs out a laugh in his left hand a sig, handing you a shovel and telling you to dig. Oh, the coal, the coal we need to survive. The more you get, the more you'll thrive. Down in his, down in the mines, his voice still rings as your back begins to break and your hands begin to sting. You see him again, that old Theodore Fu, because you've been feeling oh so misled. As for the promised promotion, you misread. He sits there and ponders, his feet on the desk. You wait, hoping you've passed his every test. All the things I can do, all the things you can be. If you work hard enough, you can be just like me. He spoke to you in such a demeanor. Not even your sister could be meaner. Down in the hole, you waste your labor. Hearing bombs, you look towards your neighbor. Some of them are missing, but good old Theodore was dismissing. They're out doing my other work. There's no loss. But who are you to be questioning the boss? Beneath the dusty gloom, her face began to bloom. In your brain, so many things you want to say, even when all you see is rolling dark gray. In the midst of the sticky clay clouds, you'll chase after her in the big crowds. Finally bestows a kiss, the world disappears. It'll be the first time you smile in years. Your perfect fairy tale written as a nightmare. On your knees, you start saying your daily prayer. Her insides turn into the ash she mines. You panic when you run out of pennies and dimes. Ending up on the steps of Mr. Fu, not sure with what else you're allowed to do. He gives you his regards, but nothing more. You'll hold your tears till you walk out the door. He's not important, forget his dirty mind. It's better to just be kind. Whispers your love, lying in the hospital bed. All your heart can feel now is dread. Finishing her last breath, her color begins to fade. Hold her so tightly, never forget the love you made. Once again, you march to that money, money-hungry rat. This time, he will have to hear every word you'll spat. The whole town must know of the schemes of Mr. Fu. How his words of, oh, all the things I can do for you, all the things I can do, all the things you can be, were just lies coming from half a man. Now we see. You spot him smiling there in court square place, puckering his lips to kiss a baby's face. The crowd surrounding him, cheering him on and on, where your wife and you did every day before dawn. Hey, you're giving our kids cancer. Is that something you'd like to answer? Hushed voices unlock the space like a key, people splitting like the great Red Sea. Standing in front of him, wanting to shout, holding your wife, a belt you must let out. This, this is all the things you can do. A selfish, rude, murderous cockadoo. You, sir, do not care at all. You are the reason for our demise, our fall. All we do is give you our best, and you've caused nothing but distress. My wife is gone. My life is gone. I know we can't choose what we're drawn, but in your field, I am just a fawn. In your chess game, I am just a pawn. In your ballet, I am the black swan. So I'm done. Done, 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 done. Holding your wife close, you head towards the east. Hope to start again, at the very least. Then you hear the sound of metal clinging your co-workers following you to leave behind everything. Throwing down pickaxes just to be picked up by another. More men for theater foo to smother. Sometimes closing my eyes can help my thoughts become more focused and clear. When there are too many sounds or noises around me, it helps me just to close my eyes and focus. Other times, closing my eyes becomes more of an uncontrollable storm of thoughts when I have nothing visual to tether me. I wanted my art piece to reflect both of these very conflicting ideas of closed eyes, my more calm thoughts when I close my eyes, and my more crazy, hectic, all over the place thoughts. So to do this, I decided to finger paint three paintings and do pen art over top of them. The part of my paintings that reflects the more calm side of things is the painting part. What I did was I blindfolded myself and I listened to music and sounds in nature and just kind of absorbed what I was hearing and put it down on my canvas with paint. After I'd done the blindfolded portion of the painting, I decided to go back into the painting with my eyes open and just add in some extra things, maybe some visual elements around me, maybe some more things I heard, and just sort of add that into the painting to add more contrast and textural value to the painting. I wanted these to be really like,
paint blobby like you run your fingers over them and you can feel all the bumps and things um, that was to add the more calm side of my thought process to add in the more overwhelming kind of brain dump part of my um, thought process I decided to do pen art this was just kind of to reflect how crazy my brain gets so the pen art is really not any specific thought stream it's just like a brain dump of all the thoughts that were going through my head as I was painting and as I was doing my pen art um, some troubles I had during my process were when I was done painting I realized there was a lot more canvas blank space than I wanted there to be and so I decided to use my pen art to help fill those gaps I had originally just wanted to use the pen art to go over the painting but I decided to also use the pen art to fill in those gaps um, I videotaped my process so I sped up my painting process as I videoed it so it's a little speed through of my painting and then I do little videos of the finished products and I chose a song to go over these videos it's not one of the songs I listen to but um, this is also the song that inspired the title for my piece which is oh sorry seeing blind um, it's by Niall Hornan and Maren Morris I felt like this song just really went with my whole idea of closing your eyes and just absorbing things and sort of just seeing things with your eyes closed. So that song is over the video. This process really kind of helped me to get out of my normal sort of somewhat perfectionist art style. I do a lot of like watercolor and very neat things typically. So this project really helped me to just get out there and create something beautiful and messy and just fun. Um, I call it atypical art because when you look at it, it doesn't really mean a lot to someone outside of my experience, but it means a lot to me. So, thank you. I have seen, seen it all in pain. Watched it unfold on the screen, but I never understood. I have heard, I've heard you speak a million words. Now you're talking to me first. I never thought you would.
my name is Kate Nichols. I am a sophomore and I am in the dance stand at the Fine Arts Academy. When I heard closed eyes, I thought of a one-sided friendship or relationship you can have with someone. I represented the person with their eyes open who was giving and trying to communicate with the person with their eyes closed. For the person with their eyes closed, I didn't want to use a person since we are in the middle of a pandemic. So I used a fence to represent the non-commutative side of the relationship. I hope you guys enjoy my dance and the rest of the showcase. When I first heard the theme, closed eyes, I immediately thought of what I do every time I feel a panic attack coming on. I close my eyes. I've struggled with anxiety for most of my life and I wanted to share my experiences with others a little bit. I wrote a song on my ukulele about what goes on inside my brain when I close my eyes and the contrast between the two main parts of that, which is chaos and relief. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the showcase. Thank you. I'm sick of this whole guessing game, so afraid, but I'm to blame. La da 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 Hi, my name is Eden Maddox and I am in the creative writing strand of the Fine Arts Academy. I interpreted the theme closed eyes as not seeing or avoiding all or parts of the truth.
so I decided to create a piece about an interrogation that isn't quite what it seems to be. I created a video of myself reading the story that I wrote based on the theme and impersonating each of the characters. I would like to put a trigger warning in here. One of the sections contains a bit of special effects makeup done by a friend that involves blood. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy Nightmare. Tap, tap, tap. The sound is repetitive, perfectly spaced and even heartbeat. The figure in the center of the room doesn't react as I enter and take a seat across from them, but slowly the room becomes eerily silent. My notes contain a single word, jealousy. As soon as I read it, the figure begins to laugh, slow and quiet, raising their head. Their face is feminine with a pointed chin, narrow eyes and sharply drawn eyebrows, their hair long, poisonous green. Their skin seems tight over their bones, their hair is matted to the point of no return. Their black irises hold my gaze, sending a shiver down my spine. I've been waiting for you, they purr in a raspy, bruised voice. You are a suspect in this case. I struggle to keep my voice steady. Can you tell me where you were last night? The figure rests their sharp chin on skeletal hands. Their teeth are filed to points, blindingly white. Last night, I was in the place. Where is the place? Their eyes narrow, you know where. Stop playing games, I grit my teeth. Were you waiting for someone? Oh, you mean one, such a pretty thing, took pity on me. Who is one and why were you waiting for them? They smile, you know the answer. They lurch forwards, their hands pressing against the sides of my head. Images flash through my mind, a girl in a rose-red coat standing in the snow, eyes filled with pity, soft hands holding rough, calloused ones. Then I am back. I jerk away from the figure, gasping, my heart drumming in my chest. What was that? The figure's black eyes flash, glowing a poisonous green. Truth. Click. 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 The sound is irregular, unevenly spaced, the clicking one would hear from a beetle. My body aches to flee from the unpleasantness of what I hear. I am still shaken by my encounter with the first figure, and I dread what is to come. I sit down at the table, staring at the figure across from me. They are hunched oiler, oily hair, the color of old blood hanging over their face. Muttering reaches my ears and turns my stomach. The clipboard again contains only one word. Rage. You are a suspect in this case. I struggle to hide the tremble in my voice. Can you tell me where you... The muttering turns to words. You really want to do this, huh? The words die in my mouth as the figure raises their head. They have sharp features, a pointed chin and ears, sharp cheekbones. Their eyes are bloodshot, their iris is solid black. But worst of all is the angry red lines on their skin, swollen and oozing red, they are suddenly all I can see. The figure lets out a hiss, turn, leaning forward suddenly. Cat got your tongue? They, their tongue flicks out of their mouth, and I realize it is split like a snake's tongue. Well, their voice trembles, veins popping out. Finish it. I clear my throat, unable to hide my fear. Where were you last night? The figure's gaze meets mine, then begins to laugh, first quietly and then maniacally. I sit there, my hands clenched so tightly that my knuckles are white. I want to run, I want to scream, my breaths come in short, furious gasps. The laughing cuts off suddenly, and I look up to see that they are staring directly into my eyes. Seeing red now, are we? You are a suspect in this case. My voice is weak, my palms clammy and cold, my eyes raw, the knot in my gut tightens every second, my heart is pounding. Can you tell me anything? The figure in front of me does not respond, instead just stares, their head tilted slightly, their wide eyes unnerving me. Their dark hair is surprisingly well kept, their skin ghostly pale is much clearer and smoother than the others. Their eyes, however, whites and all are solid black. Last night? Their voice, despite sounding perfectly innocent, something about them is not right. Twisted. I can't seem to remember. They tilt their head the other direction. Do you remember? Don't turn this to me. My voice cracks. They lean forwards, but it was never about us. This is all about you. Is it, or are you just, their eyes suddenly snap to mine. Blinded. I am suddenly outside the room, staring at the three scratched windows, the lights flickering, my heartbeat is too fast. The middle window clears and I see the dark-haired figure. Are you blinded? The green-haired figure is laughing inside the first room, tired of being pitied. The red-haired figure with the cuts is staring directly at me from the third room, seeing red. The middle figure's soulless eyes pierce into me. Liar. 
The lights go out. All I can hear is my own shaky breaths, but then more breathing joins mine and three voices ring out. Liar, you avoid the truth as it sits right in front of you. The lights snap on. All three figures stand up straight, staring dead ahead, their lips moving simultaneously, their eyes each glowing a piercing color, one poison green, one blood red, and one piercing black. Their mouths wide in a terrifying display, teeth filed to a point blindingly white. The clock strikes zero. Wake, Wake up. up. Hi, my name is Amara Clancy, and I'm in the instrumental music strand of the Fine Arts Academy. For my showcase, I combine sections from five different pieces of music. Pink Elephants on Parade, Galileo, Tortoises, Elephants, and Black Hole Sun, into a piano and two violin piece. It relates to Closed Eyes because it's, well, about a dream, specifically a fever dream I had when I was really sick a few years ago. The music is supposed to be very choppy and almost disconnected in a way, to embody the sleep-deprived, dizzy feeling that dream gave me. I hope you enjoy my showcase.
my showcase, I took closed eyes into a more literal sense. I wrote a short story about a blind dog. In the story, the dog is figuring out what is happening to him and how he can adapt to the changes. As a little twist, I wrote words that stood out to me in braille, including sensory words or words that are repeated. As I read the story, you can follow along and see the words written in braille. Thank you and I hope you enjoy. I open my eyes. I look around to see Rebecca. I look around to see Patrick. I look around to see the old man who gave me the treat before I went to sleep. I don't see anyone. I don't see anything. I smell them, but where are they? I'm alone. I start to whimper. Did they leave me? Hey, Max, we're right here. It's okay, I hear Rebecca say. But where is she? I turn my head around to see more darkness. A hand pats my head and I flinch. It's just us, Max. Everything's okay. Do you want to go on a car ride? Car ride? Yes, I want to go on a car ride. But where's the car? I sense Patrick's hands under my stomach. I'd rather Rebecca carry me. Her hands are softer. I'm going to bring you to the car, buddy, Patrick says. He picks me up and starts to move. I turn around to make sure Rebecca's behind us, but I can't find her. I can't see where we're going. What if they get lost? I bark. Another pat on my head. Rebecca. I settle down. The car seat feels soft under my stomach. I don't know what side I'm on. Where's the window? I stay still. Max, come, Rebecca says. Come where? I move my paw to stand up on the seat. I don't feel anything. Rebecca's hands lift me up and lay me down on the cushion. She scoots me over and sits next to me. I'm worried about him, Rebecca says. Me too. I'm sure he'll be okay. The vet just said to stay with him until he gets the hang of things. I hear the car move from the ground and my body almost falls as the car shifts. Rebecca holds me tight. The car ride isn't as much fun as it used to be. I can't find the big black and white dogs that eat grass all day or the building that is always filled with kids. I can't bark at the other cars to make sure they don't run into us. I can't bite my way up to Rebecca's seat in the front to be close to her and Patrick. Where is everything? I listen for the car to turn onto the long gravel road, and when it does, I wag my tail. I'm excited to be home. Max, buddy, I'm going to lift you up again, okay? Patrick says. I still don't see him. His cologne is pungent, and I smell it almost immediately. He picks me up, and the cool air pierces my fur. I want to see outside before we go in, but I can't find anything. Where are the trees? Where are the bunnies that I need to protect from Rebecca and Patrick? What about the other dog across the street? Rebecca shuts the door behind us and then opens the front door. I smell Daphne as soon as the door opens. I wonder if she can see anything. Patrick sets me down on the ground. What am I supposed to do? I take a step and my head feels a thump and starts th to throb. I try it again. The same thing happens. Am I doing something wrong? Where's Patrick and Rebecca? I slide down my paws and lay there. I miss the old house, the one where I could see everything. The one where Patrick, Rebecca, and I would lay on the couch and Daphne would be on the counter staring at us. The one where I could watch outside and make sure no one walks by. The one where the smell of bacon that they were making just for me filled the house. I feel a tap on my head and a meow. Daphne. I look around to find her, but I see the same things. Her smell floats all around me. She must be laying near. I feel comfort with her there. I hope she is doing okay with this, too. Rebecca's scent fills my area and her hands around my head. He seems sad, says Rebecca. Patrick walks over. Max, bud, do you want to come to the couch? I wag my tail. I love when we're all here together. Patrick picks me up again and brings me into the other room. When he sets me down, my paws sink in a little and it scares me. I whimper. Lie down. I lay down and feel Rebecca's hands on my back. She always knows what to do to make me feel better. Noise fills the room, and it's hard to focus on just the rubbing of my back. I try to stand up again. I need to go outside. What's wrong, Max? Rebecca says. Do you want to go outside? She guides me up and off the couch. Her hands on my collar make me feel protected. One step at a time, and then I hear a door open, and Rebecca moves around and guides me into the cool air. I miss seeing the colorful leaves and the green grass. I miss the squirrels that I would chase away. I miss the sticks that I would bring to Rebecca and Patrick. I smell around and find a good spot. When I'm done, I try to feel for Rebecca, but she's not there. Did she go inside? Did she leave me? Did they all leave me? I shake. It's getting cold out. Oh, Max, come on inside. Rebecca runs over to me and guides me back inside. The warmth comforts me. As I lay there that night on Rebecca and Patrick's bed, I think of the things I used to see but can't anymore. It makes me sad, but then I think of the things I can't see. 
I can see the affection between Patrick and Rebecca. I can see the feeling of disappointment when I don't make it outside in time. I can see the happiness that lurks in the room when we're all together. I can see the disgust that Daphne feels whenever Patrick and Rebecca cook bacon. I can see the baby that moves around in Rebecca's tummy. And most importantly, I can see the love that lies within our family. Hi, my name is Madison Hornover, and I'm a junior in the Visual Arts Strand of the Fine Arts Academy. And when I first heard the theme of closed eyes, I immediately thought that when you close your eyes, you know, you kind of get a chance to not be in the moment. You know, all throughout life, and especially during school, like, you're living in the moment and what you're learning at the time, and you're really focused on what's happening right now. But when you close your eyes, you kind of get a minute to relax and think about the future, the past, just anything but now. And so in my future, I want to move to New York. So I decided to paint a New York City block with acrylic paint. And on top of that, you may notice there's a bunch of rats. So um, I got that from the movie Ratatouille. I don't know how many of you guys have seen that, but there's a scene where Remy, the main character, is biting into a piece of fruit and a piece of cheese. And as he does that, he closes his eyes and behind him is just like a bunch of colors and um, in different patterns just kind of showing how he feels um, when he eats that food and like what it tastes like and so I kind of incorporated that more into my style those like blobs of color which is really similar to my take on like impressionism which is more like free brush strokes and stuff like that so I kind of I usually focus a lot on detail and with this piece with the overarching figures I kind of tried to be more free with my movement especially in the window there isn't a whole lot of detail it's more blobs of color which was also also made it easier to draw because then you don't have to focus on a ton of different things and then on top of that I added a bunch of rats to the scene because I thought it would be funny like a cute little thing to do so I added a bunch of famous rats too. There are the three blind mice down at the bottom. There's Mickey Mouse walking from the right. And I also added Remy in there. Um, I'm not gonna tell you where he is because it's kind of like a Where's Waldo thing on where he is, but he is wearing a chef hat and he is in there. So it would be cool if you guys could find him. And yeah, just overall, I wanted to have fun with this piece. I did run into some problems just because you know, impressionism, or at least my take on it, isn't really, it's not really my style. I kind of like to look at a photo and draw exactly what I see, which is realism. So I, I did run into problems with uh, using that style, as well as it's a perspective piece. So I had trouble finding out where the shadows went, what looked well, you know, I really had to play around with it. It was a lot of trial and error. Um, but I did have teachers, you know, to help me. It is hard over online, but I think overall I got the hang of it, and I'm really proud of myself, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the show. My showcase is about how people have closed eyes to big problems and social issues in our world. In my piece, there will be an A section, then a B section, then the A section repeated in a slightly different way. This shows how problems are on the down low, then all of a sudden flare up in the media and then go back to being on the down low, even though they're just as important as they were. During my process, I had lots of struggles putting the movement together. I never really found the perfect way to do it, but overall, Closed Eyes was more about the process for me than the final product. Thanks and enjoy.
Hi, my name is Azalea Twining and I'm a sophomore in the music strand of the Fine Arts Academy. For my showcase, I created an arrangement of Kate Bush's song and Dream of Sheep, the protagonist of which is a woman stranded in the middle of the ocean who, as the song progresses, surrenders to the reality of her situation and finally closes her eyes, allowing herself to be weak and vulnerable. I am so grateful to all of my collaborators, including my brother Mac, who is dancing, friend Sabina, who animated parts of the video, and my mom for filming. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy. Hi. So I took closed eyes in a literal sense, like when I close my eyes, my thoughts convert from abstract thoughts with pictures into literal thoughts with like words, kind of what you'd see over like a comic book character with the like the bubbles. And I took the literal thoughts and I turned them into a monster, which is what my showcase is about. It's about a monster in a girl's head and what happens to them and how she deals with it and yeah so i hope you have a good rest of the showcase i hope you enjoy it i don't know where it came from i don't know why it's here i don't even know why it scares me but it does it pops up when i'm hurting or when i want to be alone it's a monster of my own creation and it won't leave me alone boo go away ah come on what's wrong with a little fun I'm not in the mood. When will you be in the mood? Not.
now. Fine. Sometimes I wonder if I did the right thing by shutting it out. I always thought it would drown me if I didn't do something. That it would snap my neck if only it got the chance. Are you sure that's right? Yes. Isn't it supposed to be the opposite? No. Why not? Go away. Why? All I did was ask a question. Just go away. I'll go away when I'm good and ready. Well, I'm good and ready now. Go. Hello again. Yeah? I didn't think you had that in you. Did you enjoy it? No. Your mind says different. No, it doesn't. It chuckled. I heard it. That was you. Don't you get it? Get what? Get what? You'll see. Monster? You think I'm a monster? I never said that. Not out loud. You're just different. Different. Is that all? Yes. It's not. Yes, it is. Okay, maybe you're a little annoying. Little? Boo. Haven't I told you to go away? Have you? I did, didn't I? Did you? Would you just go away already? I can still feel you. This is the best I can do. You've left before. Only when you wanted me to. Only when you wanted me to. It echoed in my mind, but not because it was powerless, but because I was powerful. I am powerful. Why does it scare me so much when I have all the power? Hello? Yes? What did you mean when you said I have to want you to leave? It's complicated. I have time. You're not ready. Yes, I am. No. When will I be ready? I don't know. Hello? Yes? Am I ready yet? Not even close. Why? If I told you that, you'd never be ready. I didn't realize what it was talking about. To be honest, I still don't completely understand, but I do understand why it came. It came for me. Maybe subconsciously, I knew I'd need it to pull me through whatever storm I'd face. Maybe subconsciously, I knew it could help me. I know this sounds cheesy, but it's the best I've got. That monster saved my life, and I didn't even realize it. I know you can't hear me, but I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for being there. Thank you for showing me the real monster. Thank you for showing me me. You're welcome. I don't know where it came from, but I'm glad it stayed. It saved me without my realizing. It saved me without my consent. My monster never left me, and maybe that's how it saved me. Hi. For my showcase, I wanted to create something relatable to my audience. As we are all aware, there have been many issues happening in our world today. I wanted to create a dance responding to these issues as well as how I've been feeling through it all. I also wanted to show how dance can help me express my emotions and get through stressful times. I have overcame many challenges creating this project because I wanted it to be visually correct and I also wanted to get my point across. I will be dancing to the song Come Back to Earth by Mac Miller. I would like to thank my mom through the filming process and I really hope that this project can help others who are struggling at this time. Thank you and I hope you enjoy. We begin the hour with a horrifying statistic. The United States has now registered 200,000, 200,000 coronavirus deaths. Dr. Anthony Fauci this morning in an interview with Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Many homes that destroyed in this area, and I spoke to Kent earlier. My regrets look just like texts I shouldn't send. And I got neighbors that more like strangers we could be friends. I just need a way out of my head. I'll do anything for a way out On my head In my own way, this feel like living Some alternate reality And I was drowning, but now I'm swimming Waters to relieve And all the things I do To spend a little time 